Rich, it is so good to be with you. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Gary. Sunday, best day of the week. Mm -hmm. And we are glad you are here joining us. And we got, as always, a lot going on. And uh, this week, I don't know, it feels like maybe a little bit more than a lot. So yes. what all we got? Well, all good things. So starting today after second service, we're going to have an egg packing party. And that's because we're getting ready for egg extravaganza, which is gonna be on Friday. So today though, we're gonna have after second service, it all set up for everyone to be packing all those eggs. And we need 20,000 eggs packed with candy. So we need as much help as possible. So if you're willing and ready, you can come over here and have some fellowship and fun with us and get all those eggs packed. I guess if we had 20,000 people, we would only have to do one egg each. Yes. But we might not have that many people. But honestly, we set this whole lobby up with round tables and just, mm -hmm. uh, you can do it with your kids. If your kids are able to yeah. pack the eggs, they can join you. They might eat more of the candy than, than we want them to, but we got at least 20,000 pieces of candy. So maybe they'll, they can have one or two. Or, but we also are gonna have pizza, so if you are able to join us, please sign up in the mm -hmm. app or on the website so that we can make sure that we have enough pizza for the egg packing. Then, on Friday, we are gonna be doing our egg extravaganza, and we're doing it on a Friday. Last year, we made the switch, because mm -hmm. we had, they're just, every Saturday seemed like they were doing egg extravaganzas <laughs> or egg hunts all around the community so we're like you know what let's just do ours on friday and see what happens and it it worked out really well oh yeah you so came. much fun i came my kids, kids have came. a headlamp uh actually finn i think did rowan had a little flashlight and they loved it we brought friends to it so it's a great one to invite friends it's just an easy way to say hey come have some fun with us and just bring them to jesus yeah and since there's nobody else doing it on friday night we have a we have a really great crowd so if you can help with that mm -hmm. the event is seven to nine uh but we Obviously, we need a lot of volunteers to make this happen, to make it just a great experience for everybody that does show up. And then, Easter. Oh, yeah, March All 31st. of this is leading up to Easter. <laughs> yep, so that's gonna be at the end of the month, so I feel like it's a little early this year. I'm used to yeah. being in April. So, March 31st, we're gonna have three services planned. Let's see if I get these right. 8 a.m., or is it 8.30? No, 8.30, yeah, 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 8.30? Yeah. <laughs> and then, 10 a.m. and 11.30. Yes, nailed it. And if you don't know them as well as Katie does, they're <laughs> in the app or on the website. Yep. So we got egg stuffing today, eggs hunting, 20,000 on Friday, and then we have Easter. That's, that's the reason we're doing what we're doing. And then uh, next weekend, we also have baptism. So if that's something you're interested in, you can get on the app as always or on the website, and we will see you on the other side as we head into worship.
join us in worship today. We're just so grateful that you're here with us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you're going to show up, that you are alive, and that you're moving in this place today, Jesus. Yeah. Let everything that has been.
worship you in this place today, God.
crashing rock, confusion, and we pick up your peace. We pick up your peace, God. Yes, come on, family, can we take a minute? Can we do that? Father, we just say right now in this moment, we trust you. We trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that you are moving and you are speaking in our lives, God, and that we can rest in knowing that you are for us and your eyes are upon us, God. And you're leading our paths and you're guiding us, Lord. We can have peace in that and we choose it this morning. We choose you. We thank you that you are our hope. Father, no matter what is happening around us in our lives today, Jesus, Father, we ask that we could find the peace that passes all understanding. Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your peace. Thank you for your peace, God. We thank you for your peace. Father, I pray as you, you just continue the service. Lord, I pray for every heart in this place. God, I pray that you would help us to be ready to receive your word, ready to receive what you have next for us. Father, if you're calling us to lay things down, Father, that we would do it with a willing heart. If you're calling us to pick things up, God, we do it with a willing heart today. Just speak to us. Speak to us through your word. Speak to us through our pastor this morning, God. May your voice be the loudest voice. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, family. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. We're so thankful that you're here. We know you could choose to be anywhere, and we're thankful you chose to spend this Sunday morning with us. Yeah, and since you are here, we might as well have a little bit of fun, and we are going to call fun because Katie and I are going to try to throw some of these <laughs> discs around the room. We're just going to need some targets, and uh, if you're a first-time guest with us here today, we're going to call your hand a target, and the way that we're going to do that in just a second, I'm going to ask you if you're a first-time guest, and if you are, if you would raise your hand for us, and uh, Katie hadn't been throwing a lot of discs, so we need to get her some training, so any first-time guests here with us this morning, anyone see? Oh, I saw somebody scratch their head. I was ready to throw. Oh, there's you wanna, one. You want to go long? Oh, okay. We got two. All right. We're going to call Aww. this a competition because that's the only way Katie's going to do it. So True. here is one for you. Okay. You want to go first or second? Okay, I saw the one hand back here. You, you go going, first. You, going, you want no. me to go long or you want me to go shorter? Doesn't matter. All it's right. Oh, awful. see, she's calling me out. <laughs> All right, I'm coming to you, sir. Are you ready? Let's see if I can drop it in there. Look oh, at that. that All right. Woo, okay. Hey, hey, All no right. pressure, but that was pretty good. I think you got one right here. Okay. Yeah. Right. He looks like he's going to dive for it just to make you, you look good. You're going to dive for it? Because it, it could be like over here. Okay. All right. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Uh-oh, Eric. You better be. Eric, thank you for our <laughs> ushers, everybody. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, oh, fine. oh. You want to redeem it or you want me uh, to go again? You get a pick. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think it's he more... gets the pick, not you. Oh, he gets the pick? You, you, want, you want her to throw it to him or you want me to throw it to you? Oh, oh, her to throw it to you. It's he picked option. Isn't it? He okay. picked option C, and she's ducking, and I don't blame her. Oh, she redeemed herself, everybody. Look at that. That was dead on. Very good. Anybody else? Have you want to hear for the first time? All right, guests. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, we do appreciate you raising your hands and letting mm -hmm. us have some fun with that. We love to have some fun. We are really glad that you're here with us. And then online, we didn't forget about you. If you're watching us online and you want to click the link that will be in the chat feature, we will make sure that you get a disc as well. Absolutely. 
And then guess on the back of that Frisbee is the connection card. If you would fill that out and take it to our info booth after service, our team would love to meet you and they have another gift for you as well. Yeah, and everybody else in here should have a connection card and that is for you to just let us know your next steps, anything that you want us to pray for. Uh, on Monday mornings, we as a staff get together and pray for those or if you have anything else that you want to take as far as next steps. Mm -hmm. But then on the in guests, on the flip side of that, if you'd fill that out and take it to the info booth, we have yet another gift we're not going to throw it at you, but we are going to turn that into a donation, aren't we, Katie? We are. So when you turn that in, we make a $10 donation on your behalf. And this month, we're partnering with the Huckleberry House. And if you're not familiar with them, they exist to help prevent and end youth homelessness in our community. So really great thank you. And then next week, this, this is like a, a crazy great week, crazy great season for the church because... Uh, we got, we got our egg extravaganza coming up, and that is Friday night. Everybody else does them Saturday morning, so we're doing it Friday night, and we're going to have headlamps for the kids, and, well, hopefully they're going to bring some headlamps too. <laughs> Maybe uh, if we turn this property into just a big egg picking up party. There's really not a lot of hunting for it. They just go and pick up 20 <laughs> thousand eggs so that is coming up mm -hmm. this friday night we need a lot of volunteers and you can you can sign up to volunteer on the app if you would help us out with that this friday night seven to nine o'clock mm -hmm. so easter ahead. service well yeah. we're only doing this so that we get into <laughs> easter right that's right so then easter i feel like it's early this year it's going to be on march 31st so make sure you mark your calendars, invite your friends and family. It's going to be an amazing time here. We're going to have a great message of hope. We get to celebrate Jesus and what he did for us as our Lord and Savior. It's going to be a great kids environment. So really invite all of your friends and family. Again, it's March 31st. We've got three services that you can go to. There's going to be an 8.30, a 10 a.m., or an 11.30 service. And you can just RSVP to make sure you get your free tickets for the service of your choice. Yeah, and we do have, we, this is just one of the environments we have. We have so many kids' environments uh, throughout the week, and especially today, so we can be in here, they can be in there, and hearing age-appropriate lessons. Uh, Wednesday nights, we have youth ministry. Pastor Conan started a young adult ministry, because part of our 2X vision is all about the next generation. So we really are doing our best to make sure that every generation hears age-appropriate truth. Because uh, that's what we're here to do is just to, we, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. And so we want people to hear the truth. So if you want to be a part of what we're doing here at C3, uh, we do appreciate that. And as always, there's three ways to give. There is, yeah. So you can go to our website and make a donation or you go to the app and make any donation. You can text a dollar amount to 84321. Or if you're joining us here in person, you can drop your donation in the offering buckets as they're being passed around. So thank you for being part of C3 and what we're doing here. And would you just give a warm round of applause to our lead pastor, Conan Stevens. Man, round of applause, I'll tell you what. Well, good morning. Man, Easter, when it, it, it hit me again, like it is this month. It is coming up quick. And so... Uh, Appreciate it, man. So anyway, thanks so much for spending your Sunday uh, with us, whether you're here in person, whether you're watching online. We are honored that you are here. And we are in the midst of a series entitled, The Things Jesus Never Said. You know, Jesus gets credit for a lot of things he didn't say. He gets blamed for a lot of things that he didn't do, okay? So uh, we're looking in Scripture, and if you were here the first week, we talked about something Jesus never said. Jesus never said, follow your heart. Jesus said, follow me, okay? The second week we talked about where the scripture doesn't say, you know, God will never give you more than you can handle. That's one that maybe believers have said, uh, but we talked about how you will never be beyond what God can handle. Uh, last week, uh, Pastor Christie did a great job talking about, you know, Jesus never said, believe in yourself. He said, believe in me. That's what Christ said. And so today we're going we're gonna to keep going down this path. Uh, I want to talk about one today that our culture sells it. Man, they throw it out there um, really strong. And it's one that can sound right. It's one that can feel right. But when we look in Scripture, we're like, uh, I don't think, I don't really think it's right. It's actually one that if you push against you might even be canceled, okay? You're like the whole cancel culture uh, because, man, this is like it's a current that our culture is heading on. And so maybe some of us have heard it said. Maybe some of us have even said it. We've said it to ourselves. We've said it to others. Today I want to talk about something Jesus never said. Jesus never said, live your truth. 
Okay, some of you are like, ah! Okay, if I was to say, hey, raise your hand if you've said that or somebody said that, don't raise them. Some of you are like, ah! You know, I had a couple of you like, you've said f- so far the last three are things I've said myself, okay? Jesus didn't say that. He never said live your truth. Now, here's what live your truth means in our culture. So I kind of got a definition here. Uh, Living your truth is a concept that involves being completely authentic, honest, true to yourself. It's about embracing who you are, what you believe in, and how you express yourself. Now, we look at this and go, what could be wrong with that? Like, that feels right. That even kind of sounds right. And I would say this, if you're not following Christ, Honestly, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, with whoever you want, <laughs> okay? Now, there's conse- some, there may be some consequences here on the earth. There's for sure going to be consequences in the world to come. But if you're a follower of Jesus, uh, I tell you what, a follower of Jesus, living your truth can be a trap. And I want to kind of delve into this today. Um, when we say live, live your truth, now what is truth? Um, Truth is this. Truth is that which is true in accordance with fact or reality. We live in a society today that says, hey, all truth is relative, and you have your truth, and I have my truth. And we can all live our own truth as long as it doesn't affect someone. So, you know, we live in a world that said, hey, if, you know, what you believe is fine for you, what I believe is fine for me, but it doesn't really work if I said, hey, How do you like my black pair of pants? And you're like, (laughs) Conan, that's your truth. I believe they're yellow. Or maybe for today, green. Paige, I really like your outfit, by the way, that green suit. Come on. If you're like, no, bro, those are green pants. I'm like, no, they're black pants. No, they're green pants. No, they're black pants, right? So there has to be truth. And you could go, well, my truth says it's this. How many know it doesn't work? It cannot work. Um, And so this live your own truth says that no one set of beliefs, um, no one is right or wrong, but it's true for you, it's true for me. That's where live your truth comes from. And, you know, in this live your truth, then all of us can be right. And no one has to be wrong. And ultimately, no one has to change their behavior because what is true for me may not be true for you. And that's why this live your truth is so attractive. Because people are like, oh, I don't really have to change. But if we're following Christ Jesus, we have to change. And this is what we're going to get into. Um, you cannot have two contradicting uh, truth. In fact, there's a law called the law of non-contradiction that says you can't have two people saying, oh, we have two things that we're saying are complete truths in exact or exactly opposite. One has to be right, and the other, uh, one of them, you know, wrong, the other is right. And so... When someone says uh, this whole thing of absolute truth, of like, well, there's no such thing as absolute truth. Um, it, so when they're saying that, we're going to get into where that actually leads of, they're actually saying there's no such thing as God. To say there's no such thing as absolute truth, uh, they're making a truth claim. And so I love this. When someone says there's no absolute truth, just ask them, are you absolutely sure? Right? Because think about it. There's no, I'm at, there's no such thing as absolute truth. They're actually making an absolute truth claim in that. Okay? But there is truth. You know, right outside here on Waterloo Road, I was coming to church today, and there's a sign out there, and it says, speed limit, 50 miles an hour. Now, let's just say I'm like, well, that may be true for others. <laughs> and I'm driving 80. Police officer pulls me over. He says, you know why I pulled you over? No, officer, I really don't. He said, well, you were going 80 and a 50. Yeah, what's your point? The point is you're breaking the speed limit. Well, officer, listen, that may be your truth. <laughs> but my truth is it's 85, so I was well under the speed limit. Now he's going to go, you can believe whatever you want, but here's a ticket, okay? I want to pay the ticket. Why? Because there is truth. You know, a, 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 an absolute truth in the world we live in is gravity. You know, if you go, well, I don't believe in gravity. It doesn't matter if you believe in gravity or not. If I held a bowling ball and I said, stand right here for a moment. I said, now I'm going to let go of this bowling ball and we're going to see what happens. Truth would say it's going to crack you in your skull, okay? Well, I don't believe it. It doesn't matter, okay? (laughs) They're going to be in a world of hurt. There is absolute truth and honestly, whether we believe it or not does not change whether absolute truth is absolutely true. And so again, here's where this can get harmful 
Because to say there is no absolute truth is to say there is no God, that there is no lawgiver. Um, and so, because what are we saying? We're saying, wow, there is no governing standard. There is no creator who set in place laws and truth, okay? And then I would say this too, to say there is no absolute truth is, think about this, to put yourself in place of God. Because to say there's no absolute truth is saying this, well, I know everything there is to know about the entire universe. <laughs> I don't know about you, the older I get, the more I learn and know, the more I realize I do not know. Anybody there? When I was younger, I thought, man, I know it. I know it all. Then I get older, I'm like, I don't know anything. So for me to say, oh, there's no such thing as absolute truth, we're actually putting ourselves in the place of God that we are the top in the world creation and the universe. I am the ultimate authority. We're also saying, I know every single thing there is to know, and so therefore, I am making this truth claim. That is a scary place to put yourself, if you think about it. And so, um, man, now the only thing you could say is, well, with the limited knowledge I know, <laughs> which we all have limited knowledge. In fact, if you were to draw a huge circle, which is all the knowledge that could ever be known in the entire universe, how much of that circle would you say you know? Like, oh yeah, I understand this. And I, pff, maybe a small speck in this huge circle. And so, uh, but here's what I know. With, without absolutes, things can get crazy. Things can get crazy. And that's why when people don't have truth, their lives can become an incredible wreck because you don't have a foundation for which to stand on. And so we look at truth. There is truth. In fact, if you grab one thing today, I want you to understand this. There is truth, and his name is Jesus. Okay, there is truth. In fact, look what Jesus said. We see this in John 14, 6. He said this, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So here is Jesus. He's clearing it up. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is clearing up a whole lot in this statement. Number one, he's saying, you know, the only way to God the Father is through me. I realize we live in a society that says there's you know, there's all kinds of ways to God and every path leads to heaven. That's not what Jesus is saying. He said, no, 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 no. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I've heard it said this. There are many ways to Jesus, but there's only one way to God. Like, okay, there's only one way to God. His name is Jesus. But all, are, yeah, but all of us have come to Jesus in different ways. Right? Okay, but it's through Christ Jesus. He is the truth. Um, all religions do not lead to God. Jesus was very clear. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Christ said. There is truth. His name is Jesus. Jesus, look what it also says in Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't know about you, to know that there is solid ground for which I can build my life that should be a huge relief. Then I'm not the one holding all this thing together. In fact, when people say there's no such thing as absolute truth, they're putting themselves in the place of God. I do not want to be my own God. I'm like, man, I got, is I got issues. <laughs> right? I, I come to the end of my rope. What do you do then? What do you do when you come to the end of yourself? That's why we need God. We need truth. We have absolute truth. His name is Jesus. And the absolute truth of Christ does not change in time or culture or different places of the world. Like, he is true throughout all creation. God does not change. His truth does not change. Society may try to redefine things, redefine morality, redefine all of these things. Christ stays true. So God is truth. I'll say this as well. His word is truth. Look what the scripture says in Psalms 119.89. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. So we can build our lives upon this truth of Christ in his word. But here is the hard thing about truth. When there is truth, we have a decision to make. We either line our lives up with it or we choose not to. 
But if there's truth, we have to change. And that's the hard thing. We no longer follow our desires. And, and kind of the, the, the main, where I want to drive us today or really challenge us is with this. Here's, when it comes to Christ and who he is, there's really one of two choices. We are either transforming into Christ's image or trying to conform him into ours. Think about that. This is what the world has done. Oh, I will build a God, small g, and I will, I will conform that God into my image so that I don't have to change. In fact, I'll conform this God so that, man, I can fulfill all my desires, whether sinful or lustful or you name it, pride, greed. I will conform a God to fit me rather than transform myself, right? Allow Christ to transform me, rather, into his image. And so every one of us have a decision to make. We're either transforming into the image of Jesus. That is the whole goal. Man, I don't know about you. I want to look like Jesus. Jesus came, died, he rose again so that we can look like him. We can be changed by the power of Christ. We're either transforming into his image or we're trying to conform him into ours. But to transform to look like Jesus is not easy because we're dying to our sinful nature. That's what Christ is calling us into. We follow his commands. We follow his truth. It is a life of surrender. Now, let me just say this too. And, you know, it's not just about being a good person. Um, the relationship with Jesus is not just about behavior modification. It's about life transformation. Sometimes we go, oh, man, I'm trying to be a good person. It's not about that at all. It's not about just what we're doing. It's about us becoming we are to become like Christ. And that's what he made available to us through his death and his resurrection through Jesus. And so there is a battle that is going on for the souls of mankind. And we're either going to be transformed like him or we're going to conform a God, small g, into our image. And so wrote this down. We try to conform God to our image when we interpret or portray God in a way that lines up with our desires, our beliefs, our values, my truth. Okay, so, you know, and I'll be honest, man, I've been following God since I was a kindergartner. I still got a ways to, I'm still trying to be transformed into his image, right? It's a process where we begin to look more and more like Jesus. And so, again, we're either going to transform into Christ's image or we are going to conform him into ours. Now, I want to take you to the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, we see a picture of this. And so, backstory, you know, um, the Israelites, God uses Moses, and God flexes power a little bit, sending all these crazy plagues on the Egyptians, till finally they go, okay, and they release them, and then, man, the Israelites come out of slavery, they get to the Red Sea, all of a sudden, Pharaoh, the Egyptian king, changes his mind, sends an army after him, they're panicking, God parts the Red Sea, the, Egypt, or the, the, the Israelites go through the Red Sea, and the army comes after him. The waves crash in, destroy the army. God, like, does these incredible miracles. So here are his people. God is desiring to set his people apart. Hey, we're going to show the world, like, uh, you're going to be my people. You're going to live according to my ways. And, uh, man, it's going to be a huge, like, wow, this is, God is calling us, right, kind of thing. Like, this, this is God's people. Come on, this is what it looks like when you walk in relationship with God. So Moses goes on the mountain then to get these laws that God is going to give his people. And the people are there, and, and look what the Bible says. <laughs> you know, I mean, Moses doesn't leave them for very long. And it says, when the people saw that Moses, long and coming down, like, he's been on that mountain for a while. They gathered around Aaron, kind of second in charge, and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. And as for this fellow Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't even know what has happened to him. Now, God just did all these crazy miracles. And they, they've already forgot him. And they're like, come, make us, you know, make us gods. Fashion a God that we want. And Aaron answered them, okay, take off your gold earrings that your wives, sons, daughters are wearing. Bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings, brought them to Aaron. He took what they had handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. And then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. Now, can you imagine what God in heaven is thinking? Like, what? 
You know, they're given this idol that they made with their own hands, that they fashioned with their own hands, and then they're going to bow down and worship it. And then the quote says, when Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early, burnt sacrifices and offerings and presented fellowship offerings. And afterward, they sat down to drink, eat, drink, and got up to indulge in revelry. You're like, what in the world is happening? They took all this and they made a God, small g, that they could then worship. Now we look at that and go, that is crazy. You know what they did? They were living their truth, baby. That's what they were doing. Now we look at this in today's society. Oh, come on. No, that's what we do. Live your truth. In other words, live what you believe. We have a decision to make as followers of Christ. Will I be transformed into the image of Christ or will I try to conform God, a God, to fit my needs? Now think about that. I want us to think in our own lives, are we trying to conform God to fit our image? Or are we being transformed to be like Jesus? I mean, that is the goal. And so they tried to conform a God to, to fit their own image. Why? So that they didn't have to change. They're like, wow, we don't have to change. In fact, we can create a God that will support our desires and we can do whatever we want. And so I think some of the ways that we may do that, just a couple thoughts. We try to make a Jesus that doesn't disagree with us. You know, I've, I've had some conversations with people, and they're like, you know, I go, man, yeah, oh, well, I got this one area in my life, but I'm talking to one guy, he's like, yeah, I got this one area in my life. I know, I mean, I know, I know scripturally it's wrong, but like, me and God have this understanding. And I'm like, bro. What are you talking about? Yeah. I said, okay, so let me get this right. So out of all the people in all the world, like you get a free pass in this one area of sin in your life. Well, if I call it sin. No, let's just call it what it is. It's sin. So you're saying you got a free pass. Well, I mean, if you put it that way. Yeah, that's how we're, how do you think God's going to put it? Okay? So he's trying to conform a God to fit. Uh, so we try to make a Jesus that doesn't disagree with us. Uh, how about this? We want, a, we want a Jesus that doesn't hold us accountable because there's nothing to be held accountable for. We're like, well, you know, I mean, God's grace. So I get a free pass to live however I want. Ah, uh, no, that's not, that's not what Scripture's talking about. And so we feel like, wow, we, maybe we're at a place where we feel like we don't need to repent or we don't need to change. And so, again, uh, when, we, when, we, when we don't, when we don't live by truth, we end up fashioning a God in our image. And here's why this is so important. Because we are building our lives on what we believe is true. That's why even some of these, why we're dealing with this, some of these small things, you know, uh, we're going to talk next week about, hey, God wants everyone to be happy. You're like, oh boy, where are you going with that one? Yeah, show up next week, okay. Uh, but we look at these small things and we're like, oh, well, live your truth. Without even realizing it, we build our lives on something that is not truth. And then all of a sudden, the, the, our lives come crashing down, or we're heading in a direction that the farther we go, the farther we get off. And that's why this is such a big deal. Look what Jesus said, John 8, 30, uh, John 8, 32. He said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Christ desires us to walk in freedom. And so I just want to challenge us today. Is there, is there an area of your life that you're trying to conform God to fit your narrative, your truth. Is there an area of our life, sometimes we can hear that, we're like, oh, for them. No, no, what about us? May we examine our hearts today and go, Lord, is there an area of my life that I am trying to get, you know, an area of where I'm about God's truth and I'm trying to conform to my truth? You know, our feelings are not truth. Man, our, our emotions, our desires are not truth. Our experience is not always true. Jesus is truth. And that's why we see this generation, that's why we see this culture today in such bad shape because they're building their lives on something that's not a firm foundation. And so as we look at our lives, like, wow, truth has a name. Here's what I know. His name is Jesus. His name is, his name is Jesus. And so how do we do this? How do we know if we're making God in our image? I would say when we think we don't need a Savior, how many know we need a Savior? I mean, I need a Savior. You need a Savior. Uh, we begin to think, well, I'm not that bad. 
or we convince ourselves that, well, we're a good person, so I don't really know if I need Jesus. Uh, you know, here's what I know. We can't save ourselves. We can't wash away our sin. Let me give you another one. When we try to justify, here's one, we try to justify our actions that the Bible calls sin rather than repent. Is there an area of our life today that we go, ah, I'm trying to justify it rather than repent of my sin? Um, maybe we think ourselves right, or maybe we think ourselves better than those around us. How about this? We read a portion of Scripture, and we just kind of disregard that s certain parts of the Bible. <laughs> I'll, I'll grab a hold of this, but that part, that's a little too close to home, so I'm just going to disregard that one. I'm telling you, I've seen it over and over, and if we're honest, maybe some of us are there. Or how about we try to distort Scripture? We'll take one portion of Scripture, one line, try to make it fit our narrative, try to make it fit where we are at. And so, again, I think it's easy to say this about somebody else, but to say it about ourselves. I want us to think about, is there an area of our life that we continue to sin against God rather than allow Him to change us? Um, Maybe another is we, we surround ourselves with people that tell us what we want to hear regardless of what the truth says. I'm like, wow. Maybe we believe that there's another way outside of Jesus to get to heaven. Or maybe, here's one, uh, we, we use the scripture to justify us, justify our hate towards someone or toward a certain group of people. I mean, I came across this quote. I thought it was good. It says, you can safely assume you've created God in your image when it turns out God hates all the same people you do. You know, those people. Never saw Jesus do that. He said, no, we are to love our neighbors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without even realizing it, man, this can creep in our hearts and we start trying to conform a God into fit our image. I mean, it's been done for all of history. And if we're not careful, we can be seduced into it. We can actually be tricked. And so this whole live your truth, what is it, your, my truth? My truth and that truth. No, we need to live Christ's truth. Jesus, there is truth, and his name is Jesus. So let me ask you this. Are you transforming into Christ's image, or are you trying to conform him into yours? Jesus never said live your truth. He said, I am the truth. And so today, a challenge for us is, Lord, are we living that? I, I look at what Jesus said in John chapter 8 to the Jews who had believed in him. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Listen, we are living in a, in this world, everyone is searching for truth. They're trying to create their own. They're trying to find something to hold on to. Sometimes they may find something that sounds, it may be a, you know, a, a portion true, but the rest of it is not. Christ is the truth. And if we hold on to truth, if we live His truth, if we know the truth, the Scripture says the truth will set you free. And so again, I think there are a lot of people, including believers, who are not living free. There's a lot of people, including believers, who are living an area of their life that they're trying to conform the gospel to fit them rather than be transformed by it. What Jesus is asking us to do is not an easy order to fill. He's saying, will you die to yourself? You're like, ah, that's not easy. Christ said, if you want to follow me, you have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Is it easy? It's not. And as our culture is continuing to go a certain way, Christ is calling us to live a different way, a counter culture. We should be living in such a way that we begin to stand out more and more from the world around us where people go, there's something so different about you. The way you live, the way you treat people, the way you respond, wow, the way you love, you look like Jesus. Again, in the early church, they called them Christians, I think it was in Ephesus, was the first time, meant little Christ. Where they looked so much like Jesus, people were like, wow, these people look like Jesus. May that be said about us. And I think it comes down to, again, this, this truth. There is truth in his name is Jesus. And so today, here's what we got to ask ourselves. Am I willing to be transformed into Christ's image, or am I going to try to conform Christ into my image? And so I would ask you this today. What is it that you need to surrender to Jesus? What is an area of your life that you go, ooh, I, it's probably me more living my truth than me living the truth.
There's an area in my life, here's what I know about the scripture, here's what I know about Jesus. When I line his life up with mine, I'm like, oh. He shows me areas in my life that I have to change, that I have to surrender, that I have to die to in order to look more like him. But when I die in, when I die from these things, I'm actually resurrected, right? It's like, ooh, the whole baptism, right? We die to our sinful nature, but we're raised up a new creation in Christ Jesus. Christ has a plan for our life. Christ wants us to look like him. He wants us to be transformed by his power. So let me ask you today, are you being transformed by the power of God? Or are you trying to conform Christ into your image? Are you living your truth or are you living his truth? There is truth and his name is Jesus. And if we're trying to build our lives on anything else, it is sinking sand. And when the waves come and when the winds blow, it will be exposed for what it is. But if we built our lives upon the rock of Christ, when the storms rage and the winds blow, the house is going to hold. What are you building your life on? There is truth and his name is Jesus. So let me ask you this. What is it today that maybe we need to repent of? I don't think it's preached a lot in churches anymore. No, there's something called sin. Sin is such a huge, ugly deal that God had to send his son Jesus to earth to die for it. My sin, your sin, disobedience. Jesus paid the penalty for it so that we could come in right relationship with God the Father. And maybe you're here today, and if you were to take a real good look at your life, and I promise you, if you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it, <laughs> he will. Why? Because he wants us to walk in truth. Who is truth? Christ. And so if we say, Lord, what is it in my life that doesn't line up with your scripture? What is it in my life? It could be an action. It could be a stronghold. It could be an addiction. It could be a thought pattern. It could be something that you're doing. What is it that God would say, will you lay this down so that you can be transformed into the image of Christ? My prayer today is that he reveals something to you pray that he reveals something to me and then that we just surrender it. It's the amazing thing about Christ is if we surrender it, repent of it, he gives us the strength to move forward so we can look more and more like him. Hear me today, it's not about living your truth. It's about living his truth. He is the truth. What is God asking you to lay down today? What do you need to surrender today so that you can look more like Jesus? What is an area of your life you're trying to conform the gospel, conform Christ, Ugh, I'm trying to make it my image like they did with, the, with the, the golden calf? Let's create something, oh yeah, that we can live however we want. No, Christ is calling us to die to ourselves. What is an area of your life you need to lay down today, repent of, and move forward? I'm gonna ask if you would to bow your heads for a moment, close your eyes, and first, maybe there's some here and you go, Conan, I've never... I've never really committed my life to Christ. Maybe I have, I've walked away, and today I, man, I just, I, I want to commit my life to Christ. I want to maybe even recommit my life to Christ. If that's you today, the Bible says that God loved you so much, sent his son Jesus to come and die on the cross so that we could be forgiven. He paid our debt. He paid our penalty that we could never pay. And if that's you today, I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray up here you at your seat. But if that is you and you go, Conan, would you pray for me today? I'm choosing to cross the line of faith to put my trust in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If that's you, would you just raise your hand, put it right back down. I want to pray for you. Yeah, appreciate your honesty. Yeah, yeah, appreciate your honesty. For those who raise your hands, would you just pray this with me? Just tell them, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying for my sin. Jesus, I repent. I confess my sin. Forgive me. Wash me clean. Jesus, make me new. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Give me the strength to follow you. In Jesus' name. And secondly, maybe you're here today and you go, you know what, Conan, as you're, as you're sharing, I feel like there's an area in my life, and it, again, it may be big or maybe small, it doesn't matter. And you go, the Lord is... He's challenging me. He's speaking to me that I need to surrender it. It's an area maybe I've been trying to conform him into my image instead of allowing him to transform me into his. And today, I willingly surrender this area of my life. I ask for repent. I repent of my sin. Lord, I choose, I desire to walk deeper in relationship with you. Nobody looking around. If that's you, and you go, yep. Today, I'm taking a bold step in that direction. Would you just raise your hand and put it right back down? Yep, yep, all over this room, all over this room. Yep, yep, you're not alone. Yep, 
Place your hands down. Father, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, you see our hearts. Lord, the fastest way to enter into your presence is through repentance and through humility. Lord, as we come into your presence today and we say, God, we lay these things down so that we can look more like you. Lord, our desire is to be transformed into the image of Christ. So Lord, today, we lay down anything that doesn't line up with who you are. We lay down our truth so that we can grab a hold of your truth. Your truth is the truth. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Father, today we grab a hold of who you are. Transform us into your image, Lord, today. We need you. We seek you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask those that are a, a prayer team if they would come forward. And we are, we're going to close with, a, with a, a final song. And if you need prayer, maybe something that was spoken today, maybe you're going through something difficult, maybe you need a healing in your body, whatever it may be, we would love to pray for you. Maybe you gave your life to Christ today. We would love to pray for you today. And so as the band begins to sing this last song, if you need prayer, I would encourage you to make your way to the front. But I'm going to ask all across this place if we would stand in this closing worship song.
for all of us this week is that, again, we don't try to conform Christ into our image, but we are transformed into His. So this week, may you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, and then when He speaks to you, if there's things you need to let, let go of, let it go, right, so that we can look more and more like Him. Don't live your truth. <laughs> live His truth. Amen? Amen. I'd like to speak a blessing over you in closing today, so I'm going to ask you to put yourself in a place to receive. I bless you in the name of Jesus, that this week may the Holy Spirit of God speak very clearly to you to lead you into all truth. As he speaks to you and convicts you, may you lay things down so that you can walk in closer and closer relationship with a God in heaven who loves you. May he lead you and guide you into all truth. May he lead you into all freedom and may you walk in it. May every trap that you've been ensnared in be broken off of your life now in the name of Jesus. May you walk in a new level of freedom that Christ has for you because he already paid the penalty for your sin and my sin. May you walk in a new level of love this week. May you walk in a new level of joy this week. May you walk in a new level of peace this week. May the presence of God surround you. May his protective hedge be with you and before you and behind you in Jesus' name. May you open the scriptures and may it come so alive to you in Jesus' name that you will become more and more transformed into the image of Christ Jesus. I speak life over you. I speak blessing over you. May you go in peace in Jesus' name. God bless. Have a great week.